Hello everyone and welcome back to the Whims Legacy here in Niche, where our Niche tribe is watched over by the whims of the many Niche gods who determine with the rolls of random generators and rolls of dice exactly what they are going to be up to uh, when it comes to everything from their genes to how large their tribe size is allowed to which island they will go to. And I am very excited to say today that things may really be heating up because Kior, who is our our current leader of the tribe and also our reckless main character has decided that he really wants to see what kind of hopefully water swimming child he and Sorako will have. And the thing is, the tribe is already too large. We cannot accept any more members into the tribe because we are maxed out at nine. And that is the number that the Nishling gods have determined this tribe should be. And so in his very judgmental, persuasive, inspirational way, I think Kior is going to have a couple of members of our tribe actually kicked out today, which is a little interesting because normally we can imagine it kind of like cousins just wandering away, but I feel like Kior has a much more forceful personality, and so he would really be saying everybody who doesn't have clearly water-bearing traits needs to, to leave, needs to get out and make room so that he can see if he might have some new nichelings who can swim in the ocean with him, who can be part of the sea with him and go on this adventure. And I think the nichelings that we, he would actually like kick out and, and like have leave include his older brother Kawam, who may choose to leave so that he can be with his new mate Star. Their son Kuroku, who I forgot to rename unfortunately, so he might have that name forever, but Kiro, uh, Kirkuro, there we go, uh, actually would probably go with his uncle, Kior, because he is also a water body creature, which is so interesting. I have never had a water body creature mixed with digging paw, nimble finger, fangs, and big ears, and a fluffy tail, stinky tail before. So I find this very, very fascinating. Uh, but yeah, I think little Kukuro is, ex Kirkuro is exceptionally excited to just dive off the cliff. He is out of here. He wants to go on a big adventure. He found some fish. I think that would actually make his uncle like ridiculously excited. I feel like Cure basically just lives to go fishing and he has a hard time thinking beyond that and uh, he's kind of left it you know left his mate Sarako sort of stranded up a creek ready and waiting to have her baby so let's see Kawam I feel like Kawam we're starting to pull some of the genes that I really want over to this side of things a uh, little Anara I feel uh, she hmm she's pretty closely related to this side of the family so I think it's okay to go ahead and kind of let her start wandering. Her father, Zeno, does not have much longer to live, and I really want her mother, Aquarius, to have another child. So we're going to say she is very independent from a young age and is going to go out and, like, search for roots. She's, she's not really that attracted to the water. She has webbed hind feet, but she really prefers to eat roots. So she's going to be nearby. This island has never, ever had a predator, not even a bird overhead. It appears to be quite safe, and they already have their cousin Meme roaming in the, the bushes. So I think Aquarius would feel like her daughter, seeing her daughter isn't even leaving that far. I feel like she would feel like her daughter is safe enough and be willing to let her kind of be parted, but nearby. I'll have Zeno jump up so he can kind of keep an eye out for her. And I think Kawam, ah, I really, I'm going to go, what is happening back here? Oh, Meme, you've grown up. <laughs> And Kawam has re-met his eldest daughter, Meme. Oh my goodness. So I actually think that he would probably decide to go and follow Meme and see what she is up to. But we'll leave Star pregnant with his child just in case we decide to kind of keep an eye on them. But now Kawam is with Star and nearby and, and or like with Star, but he's got Meme nearby, his eldest daughter who already has become very independent. So I think he'd be happy happy about that. And little Duke Taku, who is like my favorite nicheling I've ever had born. I don't know who to breed him with yet. I'm kind of hoping that Star will throw a female with water body and we can breed him with her, but we'll have to see. All right, Zeno is going to stay nearby gathering up some material. Duke Taku is going to be splashing in the water, but kind of nearby. And now 
we have enough members in the tribe. Phew, it's kind of hard to like keep the tribe numbers down, but I really enjoy having over like 300 episodes of Niche. I really enjoy the challenge of having to kind of like specifically prune and choose who to keep in the family tree, even if it is a blind genes challenge and I can't look at the family tree. So let's go ahead and see what kind of child Aquarius is going to have with Zeno and what kind of child Sorako is going to have with Kior as her first child. Keeping in mind, guys, that she has the possibility of passing on water body. That was what I picked. And then Claw is what the Nishling gods actually picked for her. And then Kior, I gave the possibility of passing on fishing tail and the nichelin gods picked yellow eyes for some reason so let's see all right lovely ladies what do we have <gasps> oh my gosh sorry that was a little loud i'm just a little bit like really <laughs> just when aquarius released her daughter so that she could go ahead and explore this guy shows up are you kidding me oh my gosh and what are we gonna anara what are we gonna do how am i gonna protect you little one you have a fluffy tail unfortunately you don't have any of the treats that your brother duktaku had oh dear me um can we I did was that attack successful? Oh geez, Anara! She's like, Mom's in trouble, and she just like appears out of nowhere. Zeno, you only have one day left to live. This is not how I wanted your final moments to be. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh Kior. Okay, Kior can actually do a really great attack. So he's gonna come up and he can actually give a toxic attack to that uh to that predator. And then I'm going to get Duktaku out of the way because he's gorgeous and I want to keep him alive for this. All right, come on, come on. Can we please? Okay, uh, Sirako. Okay, she's abandoning her newborn baby so that we can try to make this happen. Kukiro. Oh, we've got to stay away. Oh my gosh. Is this going to do it? Is this? No, this hit is not going to do it. So now I have to like dash away. Sirako has to protect her baby. Um, oh my goodness. Drama. Drama, drama. Kuroku, I can't risk you either. Aquarius needs to breed. This is so weird, but I need her to breed with Zeno because he's dying today. <laughs> Star, can you help? <laughs> Please? Oh my goodness. And she, she gave the tiniest, idiotiest, bittiest little attack, but she does have the poison fangs to help out. This is terrible. This is not what I wanted, and I can't let anybody... Oh no, and is Aquarius going to get sick from Anara? Oh my gosh. And in all of this chaos, I have almost looked over the fact that Kir Ta Kir has been born with water body, double claw, he's got gorgeous stripes, white... He's just... What? When I thought we would have, like, water body creatures swimming through the Nishlings rivers, I did not think that we would end up with, like, these kinds of gorgeous tigers. This is just, like, reverse colored tigers. They're so beautiful, and they're completely not... What are you doing, Kior? <laughs> completely not what I thought we would end up with for, like, our first proper aquatic mermaid tribe. Also, there's way too many men. We need more females. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh my gosh, this tribe. And then here comes Anara. I feel like she was summoned. She's like, mother's in trouble. And like her, her baby sister, Anara, is in trouble. Wait, Anara, your namesake. You both have the name Anara. This is hilarious. What is happening? Okay. Oh no, he ate the baby. He ate the baby. I've only ever had that happen to me once and I've never seen it happen. He literally ate the baby. Oh my gosh. That was horrible. Oh my gosh. That was so terrible. And now some of my, my nichelings are, are sick. Aquarius. Oh my gosh. This is... Oh, this is, this is a travesty. Oh my gosh. I, what? What? Who's sick? Oh my gosh. Star is sick. Oh, this is, this is just, this is just terrible. This is, I can't even believe what is happening here. Star, jump in this nest. Oh my goodness gracious. This is ridiculous. Aquarius, I think she'd be distraught. Let's have her go ahead, destroy this nest, eat this Varina food. Just completely like infuriated. Oh, Aquarius, what a terrible, terrible, terrible outcome. That's so sad. And all of the nichelings that I had born are, like, that are alive. Look at these huge eyes on Kira. Like, I just realized he's got little fish eyes, at least. So you're working good on that, Kirtakir. And I need to give you a new name, by the way. 
But my goodness gracious, this is this is just a travesty, like left and right. What is even happening? Oh my gosh, Sorako, I think, would be so upset, and and I think that may have even quieted Kior's very aggressive nature and made him feel a little bit more protective of his son and protective of the tribe because he he had never seen a predator like that before he didn't know that there could be such things and now unfortunately he does he he just witnessed firsthand the loss of a young life and I think that it may have actually calmed down his reckless nature somewhat oh dear and Duke Taku I love you so much. You are so beautiful. You are so beautiful. I am so sorry that your youngest sister was eaten. Um, maybe Sorako, in fact, I could see that happening. Sorako might find herself attracted to Dutaku's gentle nature and beautiful, beautiful appearance. There might be something about his just stunningly unearthly purple eyes and white fur and that blue fur like his white white mane blue fur that just it puts her heart at ease in this time of terror and uh, we'll have to look into that and see if something is going to happen there but Dukak here uh, can I get you anything? He can't even dig up a worm at the moment, but he might be able to find some clamshells actually. We kind of have cleared out the shallows so we'll have to start adventuring a little bit. Alright so next two babies Oh boy! Oh mercy me! This is just getting more and more interesting every every day. Oh my gosh! They're boys again. May I introduce to you to Kuduk, a vibrantly green male, and Von Ku, a young male who who has nothing very vibrant about him and is the last child of Zeno, who I miss deeply already. What? What? To Kuduk. What? <laughs> okay, that's kind of cool. All right, clearly we're really heavy on the males at the moment and that's making me slightly nervous. Star, I don't think you're very related to um, Duke Taku, so I might actually have them possibly breed. But I do think Aquarius, she is indeed close to the end of her life, so I think she's going to keep a little eye on her child Vanku. And I feel that, um, what should we do? I feel that Kior might start going wandering with Kirkuro, who is another water body creature, and he might bring his son. Yeah, I think he would bring his son uh, Kirtakir. And wow, Kirtark here? Do you have. <gasps> no way! He got fishing tail, water body, and the yellow eyes! He is amazing! This is fantastic! He is everything I want in my swimming nichelings. He has got like strength of five and he has got fishing of six. So I think that he and the these three are gonna go off and they're gonna go search for fish. Look at how fast they can go. This is ridiculous. Oh my goodness, and there's some fish already. Like, this is ridiculous. And they can just, like, go through so many schools of fish, and they can swim. I have never had nichelings that can do this before. I have never had the ability to send out an entire school to be able to go and search for fish like this. This is awesome. Um, and then, let's see. We're going to have Aquarius come over. She is going to gather from this berry bush. Oh, and Vanku has little webtied legs, but that's about it. And then Star is gonna keep an eye on her child. I feel like she wouldn't want to just abandon uh, this little guy. He is so cool. I've, I've not had a green nicheling like that in a very long time. And um, I feel like Dutaku might come on over and kind of keep company with a, a very distressed and distraught Sorako who does not like the fact that she was just left alone while her mate Kior took off and took their, their child dangerously swimming at the edges of the deep cliffs under the water where she cannot follow. So she might have something to say about that to Dutaku and we'll have to see where that possibly takes them. So my goodness, we're really, things are, things are picking up and going sideways and doing all sorts of nonsense today. All right, let's see. Well, let's send these guys out fishing again. I feel like Kior would be very excited I, I, just to be able to properly swim. I've never been able to properly swim like this with my nichelings before and explore the edges of the waterway. I didn't even know that you could only go so far. Like, I've never been able to do this before. This is very exciting. And then up here, little Vanku, 
I think that he and his mother, yeah, his mother Aquarius is going to pass away tomorrow. So we're going to go ahead and have her just kind of keep an eye on her son. And to Kuduk, hmm, I kind of want him to remain nearby. And Star, maybe to take care of him. So we'll have to see how that's going to go. And little Vanku, I, I think we'll go ahead and release so that he can wander. I think we'll let Star release him uh, so that he can wander. And we still don't have enough nichelings to free things up. So let's actually have these two destroy this nest. Oh, hello, Isis. Very nice to see you. But we're going to have these two destroy the nest and kind of start taking a wander together over to this area so that they're ready to jump or their children are ready to jump to the next island. And uh, I think that there's a bit of a romance weaving its way between these two. So we'll have to see what happens there. Oh, and there they go. Oh, I'm gonna miss you, Aquarius! You were so cool! I miss you so much already! Oh my gosh, and Vanku has fishing tail. Of course he would. <laughs> Oh dear. All right. Well, let's see. Now at least we can have a baby. So let's have Sorako jump up here and settle in, get herself comfy and excited to have something to eat. Duke Taku is getting a little bit older. Looks like he just found a clam. So he's getting a little older. Got to keep an eye on him. Uh, but hopefully he and Sorako can have at least one child. Let's go ahead and have Star release this little guy and Takuduk. I'm going to have him start wiggling this way, and Star will kind of keep pace with her son, hopefully not get too sick, and we'll have them join up the rest of the tribe. And meanwhile, the boys are having a great time swimming, exploring, fishing their hearts out. This is awesome. Never, ever, ever have had the ability to just do this so wildly before, and it's pretty cool. Just jumping between the rocks, searching out the fish. This is really fun. And they're really good fishers, too. All right. So this is the next child between Sorako and Kior, who does have a leech. So I do need to get that leech off of him. And their first child was Kira Takir, who is stunningly awesome when it comes to the matters of being a water body creature. We do need more females, though, who are not immediately his sister. So, Star, maybe I will have you breed with Do Talk You and possibly have another baby. This is getting a little, little, little dudley here. It's another boy, and he's got spots. That's so cute. Oh my gosh. And he's got water body. Yes, spotty water body little boy with swimming tail, not fishing tail. Another child to go into the deep, deep waters, which is very exciting. All right, so let's see. Uh, that means more boys, which is, is a mixed bag because now we still need... Okay, let's get this leech off and take care of his dad. And his dad's going to be like, fish! Because that's all that Cure really is focused on. And then let's see, we've got some really cool nesting material that Kyokuro has just gathered from the depths. We have no females. Not good. <laughs> and I think that Sorako is going to just casually step to the side and do Taduk. Let's see, can I make this happen? Oh dear. All right, come on, do Taduk. Oh no! <laughs> it couldn't happen, so they're, they're trying to have a romance, but it's not really working out the best. All right, well, let's have these little ones come over. I don't know what I'm gonna do with his genes, but I just think it'd be very interesting to keep them nearby. There we go. And... I'm running out of time on you, you beautiful creature, you. Come on, Dutaduk. I want to see some of your babies. <laughs> Please, you would have the most beautiful babies. <laughs> Please. <laughs> All right. Oh, look, it's one of the big fish. Okay, I think Kior can actually take on this Razorina fish. So let's have his son jump to the side. And then, yes, his son did it. Look at that. They just took out that entire school of multiple types of fish without even blinking. They are fantastic. Here's more fish. Look at these guys. The best fishers. That is fantastic. All right. And we're going to jump back over. Let's try this again. There we go. Okay. Scooch over, little guy. I love his big yellow eyes. They're just hilarious. All right. So we're going to scoot you over. And I think Star would come over 
And uh, she does not have as authentic a, a romance going on with Duta Duke, but I do think that there's something about him that is just a little irresistible, and maybe he's feeling kind of like the big guy because there's no other males around at the moment, so... I don't think he would mind kind of being the only one, the only one and getting a chance to kind of shine. And Ta Kuduk, I probably need to release from our tribe. So I'm actually going to have, no, 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 not next to my baby, not next to my baby. I was going to have Duta Duke release Ta Kuduk. I really need to rename these guys during a renaming ceremony between episodes. Oh my goodness. So many Dukes and Ta's and, and Dukes again. But yeah, oh my gosh, he, they're just so cool. All right, let's see. I can only have one more nicheling. Oh, oh, oh no, no, problems. Oh, nuke here. Why so many males? Oh dear, I'm running into some problems. Too many boys. Um, come on, get them, get them. Too many boys. Not enough nichelings. Oh my goodness, what am I gonna do? Flee to the waters. <gasps> Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh, the niche gods are smiling upon us and laughing at us all at the same time. A female, a female with water body just showed up out of nowhere. You guys, you guys, you guys, that is amazing. <laughs> all right. I need to have a moment to collect my thoughts. We've got to we've got to start untangling the the tangled web we have woven with our current set of nichelings. I need to get rid of the sparina. I need to figure out what we're going to do with is is me here, um, who has suddenly just become like the most beautiful nicheling on the island after, of course, Dutaduk, who's unfortunately about to pass away, even though he's like my all time favorite. And uh, yeah, we're going to figure out where to go from here because wow. And I love the fact that all of these children born with these yellow eyes just look kind of fish eyed. It's kind of hilarious. So that's a twist. That's a twist, and I can only assume with the red ram horns, if not red antlers that she has, that it's also a blessing from Doli, the seer of the sea. So we'll have to see um, what we can do, no pun intended, next time, and I will see you guys then. Bye bye